Hello, hello, and welcome to the crypt as we dig a few more skeletons from the Finch family closets. In tales from perfidious Pete plays, what remains of Edith Finch? That's right, boys and ghouls. There's still a whole flock of finches out there, and this ghastly little parade of death won't stop until every single bird has flown south for the winter. Get it? South? As in underground? As in six feet under? As in dead? <laughs> ah, okay, okay, no, I'm not, I'm not doing that anymore. The Crypt Keeper voice actually really, really hurts my throat a lot. How the hell John Cassier ever recorded all of that Crypt Keeper dialogue without tearing his vocal cords out of his throat? It's a goddamn mystery for the ages, it really is. But while we're on the subject of mysteries, hey, what about uh, Grant, great, great Aunt Barbara here? Mysteriously torn apart by fans, as suggested by the mystery comic book. Personally, I'm not necessarily buying it. It's a story in a comic book. Honestly, I think the mystery is much more easily explained and that she refused to give up her good stuff to her teenage boyfriend, Rick, and he just beat her to death with a crutch. That's what happens. I mean, you get a get a jock boyfriend refuse to give up the booty. He's going to bludgeon you to death, Barbara. You should have known. You should have known better. Really, though, the only person who actually knows what happened is uh, would be like great, great uncle Walter. And since he died at like age 11, he probably took that secret to his grave. And I guess he's probably not going to tell. In fact, one might say mummy's the word. <laughs> Okay, seriously, the last time, I promise. I feel like my Crypt Keeper is pretty good. It's like maybe the one impression I do that isn't shamefully or barbarically awful. Can we get out of Great Great Aunt Barbara's room? Is there like a passageway or some other thing that's interactive? I guess not. I mean, we know we have other options for exploring. If nothing else, we can get that key and go into the basement. But it looks like really the only thing we can do here in Great Great Aunt Barbara's room is climb back in the box... Crawl through the I tunnel. I know why mom doesn't like me playing with the music box. Oh, because it was a key to the basement? Well, let's just crawl our way through the tunnel o' liquor here. And I think this is actually going to spit us out surprisingly close to the music box. Where was the creepy demon doll music box thing? Uh, downstairs, maybe? I actually think that might have been downstairs. They really want us to go check out the music box. But you know what? They're guiding me in that... Yeah. All those times I played with the music box and never found the basement key. I, yeah, I know you really want me to go to the basement key, but what I really want to do is look around this room and figure out what the hell's going on here. So there are, like, drag marks on the floor. Come over here. This is Walter's room. Why isn't it locked up? Why is this the one room that remains unsealed? This is how we got into into Molly's room, although apparently we can't go back into it. There's got to be more to this room, though, than just the entrance to Molly. There, there has to be more to this. Nope. I guess railroad plot going to railroad. Choo-choo all the way down. We can still look in Molly's room. Okay. Yep. I mean, it's still the same. Wait, didn't we open the window? Hey, that window ain't open. Once again, I'm crying shenanigans on your static images here, giant sparrow. In what has otherwise been a fantastic, it's it's so far the one bit. What has otherwise been so far a fantastic experience, it's really the one bit that's kind of destroying my immersion. I'm not going to lie. We also still haven't figured out how to get into the library. Every finch who ever lived is buried in here. And it's also probably where I hid the bodies, but... Still. Uh, where was the creepy music box? Ah, here we go. Creepy music box, right. So, can we just pull? We have to unwind it first and then pull? Come on out, though. Or do we, if we go back this way, does it unscrew? How do we get this out? Come, come out of there. Come on. Pull. This does not seem to be, this doesn't seem to be doing anything. Is there a, some kind of button and or toggle? I can't even let go of it. I'm, I'm stuck forever. 
Please help me. I just want to stop. Is it coming? Maybe we can unscrew it? We really can't. I can't do anything. Like, what What the hell's going on here? How do I get this? Come on. Come, come out of here. This creepy little doll is dancing around eternally and it won't, it won't, the game will not let me stop. There's some button or something I'm supposed to be hitting and I just don't get it. Like, what, what am I supposed to be doing here, game? You gotta, you gotta help me out a little bit. Give me a, oh. So it's just turn it literally forever then. Got it. Okay. Maybe if I might suggest perhaps like a little less turning on the creepy weird music box. I don't want to watch Aunt Great Aunt Barbara dance around with her Bigfoot statue forever. It's, it's just it's, it's maybe a little overdone. So what horrors await us in the basement? That's that's the question. And I say horrors because so far every single member of the Finch family has had They've been either a straight up monster or they've died in a fashion that tends to suggest that maybe, just maybe, not everything was on the up and up and that, in fact, they were perhaps some sort of hideous monster. Oh, hey. It's nice to see Suds took my advice from last episode and just said, you know what? Pete was right. Suds is literally the most generic brand we could have given our laundry detergent. We're just instead going to change the brand name and just call it laundry detergent. We're gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna get better buy into the brand if we just call it what it is. We'll just generic laundry detergent. That's what we're gonna call it. Got some polar white action. Does that say destructo? Destructo clean. See, laundry detergent, destructo clean. Now there's a fucking brand name, man. You go buy a bottle of destructo clean and pour it on some shit. People are gonna be like, you know what? I didn't think it could knock out the dirt. That dirt, that was a beat on, toughed on, ground in stain. I didn't think anything was ever going to get it out. But you know what? Destructo Clean destroys dirt. The, the commercial writes itself, man. Destructo Clean, that's how you brand a product. Clean dry dishwasher soap. Clean day dishwasher soap with lime. Exclusive Carter and Ellis cleaning solution. We've seen a lot of Carter and Ellis brand stuff in his house. Is Carter and Ellis, is that a subtle nod to some of the de development team? Was there a Carter and an Ellis on the dev team? I would bet that there was. More Carter and Ellis solution. Ooh, what's with the big crown? Polar white bleach. Polar white bleach gets your whites kind of a dingy yellow because when you bleach something that's white too often, it sort of yellows and gets all gross. I guess dingy yellow deter dingy yellow bleach just doesn't quite have the same ring to it as polar white. This is sad. Baby swing for sale, never used. It's the second saddest six word story there ever is. Props to Ernest Hemingway for letting me rip him off. Of course, then again, Big Papa's dead, so it's not like he can stop me either. Star Cat. Dish soap? Does that say Star Cat? Star Cat brand dish soap. The dish soap of... Uh, wait, which one of the members of KISS is the one who has the cat face? Um, hmm. For some reason, I want to say Peter Frampton. Is Peter Frampton? Was he in KISS? Whichever one. You know what? Star Cat brand soap. It's either him or Noel from Nevermind the Buzzcocks. Back to laundry detergent. What are you? Wait, why do you have three? We got detergent. Is this fabric softener? You better be fabric softener. Not, I, I, I won't stand for having two different disparate brands of detergent. No, no, no. I'm not into that whole, oh, well, this is a delicate detergent for my fine washables, and this one is for your everyday. No, there is no such thing as a fine washable. Soap is soap. So we found Grandpa Sven's workshop. Oh, he's the one who's been carving all the hideous and horrifying gnomes. That's wonderful. I saw Edie sneak down to the basement once. Carrying packages. So what was in the packages? Also, why does why does Mom she? Said the basement was off limits, unless I wanted another tetanus shot. Uh huh. 
Hold on a second here. Let's check the Finch family. Because I thought Edie... Okay, so Edie would have been Edith's great-grandmother? So Don and Gregory. So Don is Edie's, as Edith's mom. Sam was her grandpa. And Kay would have been her grandmother. We never even heard mention of Kay, by the way. So that would make Edie her great-grandmother. Gotcha. So you saw a great-grandma Edie sneaking down into the basement. Your mom said the basement was off-limits. Somebody saw a very hardy, hale, and healthy several hundred-year-old tree, by the way, if we take a look at these rings, into a series of flat planks for Grandma Edie to paint upon. You know what, tree? I'm not much into the conservation of trees, per se. I'm not really a save-a-trees kind of guy, because by and large, trees are a pretty fucking renewable resource. There really isn't any necessary need to save them, per se. But still, you know what? You're one tree. We probably could have we probably could have spared your life. We really could have. Oh, plans for the dragon that killed him, huh? This is a hideously gruesome and grim reminder of Grandpa Sven's fate. This seems like an odd sort of thing to leave lying around for the last, I don't know, what, 80 years? When did Grandpa Sven die? Let's see here. Oh, uh, well, Grandpa Sven doesn't have dates, huh? Because we got Odin and Ingeborg. No dates for anybody who married in, huh? Even though Odin never actually made it over stateside, he drowned on the way when the house sank and Ingeborg is the one who survived. Or was that Edie and... I guess that was Edie and Sven that came over. Odin's house sank. We have no... Oh, Ingeborg died before he left Sweden or wherever it was. Norway, Sweden. Probably Norway. I get a real wood vibe from the Sven clan, and Norwegian wood is kind of a thing. What are you saying, Pete? I'm saying people in Norway always have erections. This is the birthplace of Viagra. What are you saying? What, that they got a lot of trees there? Pfft, no, it's all about erect penises, man. UB proof extra resilient eggshell enamel. Wait, if it's an eggshell color, can you really call it rainbow glory? That seems like a contradiction in terms. Eggshell is the one color that I would say, if I had to pick one color to be the opposite of rainbow, eggshell is the color I would pick. Some Theodore brand wood putty, some smoky forest lacquer, clear brush paint thinner. Ho, ho, ho. Looks like Grandpa Sven took his alcoholism to the next level. He didn't bother with liquor at all. He just straight up drank fucking paint thinner. Ah, well, I mean, he is European, and those guys know how to drink. Grain glow wood shiner. Man, Grandpa Sven was into drinking all kinds of stuff he shouldn't have been drinking. Lead-based paint, wood finish, paint thinner. Probably got some turpentine over here somewhere. Grandpa Sven was next level alcoholic. He'd, uh... He had to, no wonder he got killed by his own creation. He was just shit-faced drunk from drinking lead-based paint. So is there anything else going on over here? Any interactables? Not really. What books were you reading, Grandpa's fan? Does that say How Beacon Bacon? Train modeling. Haunted. A guide. Is that a guide on what to do if you're haunted or a guide on how to haunt someone once you have perished and passed beyond the mortal coil? If so... Who the hell wrote it? Why, Pete, I think you'll find it's the ultimate ghost-written novel. <laughs> okay, so I know I promised it was the last time, but I just couldn't help myself. Yep, drinking lacquer again. Jeez, Grandpa Sven. I, you, see, this is how we know Grandpa Sven was drinking paint thinner and lacquer, because nobody has this many different cans of lacquer and paint thinner lying around. You just have the one can, and you keep that one can until you run out. We know Grandpa Sven was drinking it because he's like, well, I can't run out. That's just absurd. I got to have backup liquor that I keep stashed in the tank of the toilet. In my case, since I'm drinking paint thinner, I got to have backup thinner that I keep stashed in the tank of the toilet. Punching bag over here. It's really dark down here. We could use a flashlight or something. Here's the refrigerator. I thought maybe she was hiding presents. Yeah. She wasn't hiding presents. Grandma Edie was probably hiding, I don't know, the severed limbs of one of Molly's most recent victims. Well, Molly would have been long dead by that time. So probably what she did is she was out digging in the garden, found a bunch of limbs of Molly's victims. She was like, oh, I got to conceal the crime post facto. So she was transplanting the evidence. She was just relocating it to a new place so that the, Molly's memory wouldn't be destroyed forever. She was hiding a lot more than that. 
Some kind of secret passage. By the way, there's a generator running, apparently. How long has this been running and how unsafe is this? To leave a generator running in an enclosed space like this? If we come in here and this generator has been on for any length of time, we are very definitely going to die from carbon monoxide poisoning. Also, it's dark as shit. Can't really see anything at all whatsoever. Where the hell does this go? I just kind of wanted to go upstairs and check out the last I few rooms, but... Mom once about where Walter had gone. Grandma Edie's making it weird. I remember asking Mom once about where Walter had gone, and it turns out he dug a tunnel into the hoary netherworld. He, got as far away as he, could. he dug a tunnel to the basement, dug his way to China, and married a lovely Chinese lady named Shang Wu. They raised a family and lived happily ever after. Probably not how Grandpa Walter's story ends. Or, he, well, I mean, he's, everybody's a grandpa. Great, it would have been like great, great Uncle Walter. A lot of Alvin O's cereal, though. Extra crispy, I'd like to point out. That's, um... This really seems like more pea soup. It's not bland. Who is fucking doing the marketing for for these people's uh, packaging? I mean, what kind of marketing team puts the advertisement and makes the tagline for their product not bland? Try new not bland pea soup. We assure you it's 100% not really all that bland. This is not a ringing endorsement for your product. Also, nobody in their good goddamn mind in the entire span of their of like one normal human life is going to eat this much pea soup. I love peas, don't get me wrong. Perfidious Pete, I'm a fan of peas. One of the few vegetables that I will religiously devour. Specifically, I don't like cooked peas, but I like like fresh peas, frozen peas. You want to talk about a man who will eat frozen peas straight out of the bag with a spoon? I am that man. If you've never tried eating frozen peas straight out of the bag with a spoon, you know what? Don't judge me. Give it a try. You may be pleasantly surprised. We got tasty bean coffee. I understand that somebody was clearly stockpiling for an apocalypse that never arrived, but still, if you're loading your nuclear fallout bunker with how many can't? Two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, fifteen. What appears to be, because I'm going to guess this is at least two rows deep. Yeah, two rows deep. 30 gigantic one gallon cans of pea soup. You've overdone it. No human being or collection of. Never mind. It's not 30 gallons of pea soup. It's 60 stores. gallons of pea soup. If there's a pattern in all these stories, can you complete your thought, please? I think it's that none of us has gotten very far. Gotcha. Okay. Thank you for completing your thought. Now I'm going to go back to judging these people based on the stockpiles of their larder. For instance, 60 gallons of pea soup, and yet they have a modest three tanks of propane which is what I'm assuming the generator is probably being operated by. I sense a disturbing imbalance in both the force and the allotment of quartermaster supplies here. Somebody fell down on a job with this one. 60 gallons of pea soup, but we only brought what appears to be 45 gallons of water since these are 15-gallon tubs. You think 45 gallons of water is enough? Uh, for how long? Well, they estimate the surface won't be habitable for between 40 and 100 years after the bombs drop. You think 45 gallons will be enough to get us through? Yep, that's plenty. But you know what we damn sure better have? 60 fucking gallons of pea soup. Here's another question. Why do you need this much coffee if you only stockpiled 45 gallons of water? You have 45 gallons of water and you got enough cans of coffee here to make about 800 gallons of coffee. Those pork and beans? Pork chunkies? Well, now I just really wish we could crouch because I'm intrigued by this product. How are pork chunkies not a thing that I have at some point put in my mouth? I would eat anything you call the pork chunk. Holy shit, is that more pea soup? That's another eight cans of pea soup. 68 gallons of pea soup. What appears to be like six gallons of mustard. And yet, we have 45 gallons of water? Also, how much fucking grape jelly does one human need? You, you, have, you have six gallons of mustard, but only four gallons of ketchup? 
Well, if I wasn't convinced that Uncle Walter was disturbed before now, I'm definitely convinced now. Uh, what does he got? Five, six, seven, eight gallons of grape jelly. Only six gallons of peanut butter. You know, that's about the right ratio. An eight to six ratio on your jelly to peanut butter is sort of what you're shooting for in the PB&J department. You want more jelly than peanut butter. You got to balance out the stickiness. It appears to be a nine kilogram bag of rice. That also doesn't really seem like a sufficient supply. We got, what, six bags of that? That's, that's, that's not enough. That's not enough at all. That's a little over 50 kilograms of rice, which is only about 100 pounds. You're going to be down here for 30 years. Holy shit, Pickles, he's got more coffee. I guess his plan is to live off coffee and pea soup that's been dehydrated because he definitely doesn't have enough water to make it. Or just the 60 gallons of pea soup is going to be his only source of liquid. Unfucking believable. This this is way too much pea soup, guys. This this larder is so and also more coffee, by the way, with no water. With how how were you? What the hell was your plan? Is this more bags of rice? Okay, well, I mean, I support the rice, but again, typically you got to boil rice. What the shit are you gonna boil it in? You get forty five gallons of water, dog. Why you would get cereal at all? Sweet Krispies? What the? What, what are you gonna? What are you gonna? The only thing I can think of is that this guy likes cereal with his pea soup. Like, instead of milk on his cereal, he pours pea soup on it. Or jelly. Grape jelly. Concord grape jelly. What are snacker stackers? Chocolate malt pudding. Six servings. This does not seem like an adequate supply for a long duration. You have, uh, what do you got, five boxes of this, so 30 servings of pudding? Also, how big are your servings? Those boxes are kind of enormous. This is only 30 servings of pudding? Do you consider like a gallon and a half to be a serving of pudding? It's too much pudding. Pork chunkies? They are called pork chunkies. I want these in my body. I don't know what you are, but I guarantee you are a taste sensation and I want you inside my mouth, pork chunkies. Um, pooper? Well, once again, shockingly filthy bathroom. It is in a video game, so I don't know why I'm surprised. But on the plus side, look at it this way. This bathroom is disturbingly filthy, and that's definitely a chemical toilet, which makes it extra filthy. But at least they had the wisdom to use the lowest wattage bulb they could find in the shitter. So that even though it is shocking and disturbingly filthy and is definitely going to give you necrotizing fasciitis of the anus, you won't at least have to look at it. Like, you could take a dump on it not knowing how filthy you just got your asshole. Be like, Pete, can you get your asshole any dirtier than you're going to dirty it by taking a shit? I would argue that, yes, that toilet is filthier than what's going to go inside of it. Shaving kit, glass of water, a uh, lot of shaving cream, eh? We also got a really weird radio hissing sound coming off. We'll get to that in a minute. What's going on here, Walter? All right, so this is where Walter came down to hide. He was into model trains. Well, it's good that you have a hobby, I suppose, Walter. That's nice. It's good to see that you didn't just make it all about the bunker. Walter lived until 2005. So, really, that's you were like 53, Walter. How come uh, just straight up going for the Santa Claus look, huh? I mean, all right, I'll allow it. Peach halves. Um, cans of peach halves. How come you had none of these back on the shelves? Why did you stockpile all the peaches over here? Peaches are probably, apart from pork chunkies, the most delicious thing in your stockpile, so maybe you just wanted to keep them close by because they were the one thing that was, like, easily to stomach as an exercise bike down here. Well, it's not like you're going to get up and jog, so I suppose the exer bike is probably a good compromise solution. Got to keep fit in the apocalypse. Echoes from afar, books on exorcism. Cracking the curse? Cracking the curse. Was he doing research into his own demise? Cracking the curse, another copy. Spiritual warfare. Surviving death. The Finch curse. Wait, somebody wrote a... Hold, hold on a second. Somebody actually wrote a book called The Finch Curse. They wrote a book about us. 
Barbara Finch, child star. Psychic self-protection. Cover up, Area 51. Echoes from afar again. It must be a series. It's like the Twilight books. The Echoes from afar. There are subtitles that just didn't get printed on a spine. It's like Echoes from afar, distant noises. Echoes from afar, subtle sounds. Echoes from afar, weeping whispers. And then the climactic conclusion. Echoes from afar, the voices are inside the house. Haunted, a guide, homemade weaponry, food of the world. Pfft, we don't need food of the world. We got 95 gallons of pea soup. Fuck the world. If we want to do anything to the world, we're going to drown it in pea soup. Thomas the Tank Engine. What's up, Thomas? Hey, where's Mr. Topham Hat? Please tell me he modeled a Mr. Topham. <gasps> Is that Mr. Topham Hat standing on top of the train? <laughs> it's Mr. Topham Hat! Also, why are two people standing on top of a locomotive having a conversation? Is this like some... Okay, here's the scenario I'm envisioning in my mind. So, Mr. Topham Hat was just going out to tell Thomas and his other shiny town friends to go out and just take a little cruise around the tracks. And then, these no-good Nick Greenpeace people chain themselves to the tracks, protesting Thomas the Tank Engine's continued use of coal power and its polluting nature. They'd be like, I'm sorry, Mr. Topham Hat. You're going to have to take this off. We can't have Thomas driving around polluting the atmosphere with his hideous coal belches. Thomas has to be converted from electric or from coal power. He can't be a steam engine anymore. You got to either tune him over to diesel or he's got to go full electric, Mr. Topham Hat. I've got in my hands a petition signed by the citizens of Liverpool saying that we will not have any more shiny time pollution being clouding our buildings and covering them with a greasy layer of soot by Thomas the Tank Engine. His time has come. You're going to have to put him down, Mr. Topham Hat. You're going to have to put him down. The Death of Thomas. That would be the name. We're going to make a diorama of this called The Doom of the Tank Engine. Also, let's open this up. What's in here? Aha. So, it doesn't actually go outside, but it is a pretty good painting of outside. I wonder if Grandma Edie did this. Also, he's spending time and energy and filling his cave with noxious fumes that will certainly suffocate him in order to make it sort of look like this is actually lit and to grow flowers. I don't know if that's necessarily going to get you through the apocalypse, Walter. I mean, it might fight off seasonal affective disorder, I guess. There are some potential health benefits, but I don't really think this is enough light to fight off sad. Also, you're going to be suffocated as soon as you seal this place up because the generator is inside with you. That's suboptimal design of the shelter. Anything else we could look at? Nope. The only thing really we could do here is just go be Walter for a little while, but I'm looking at the clock on this one, and I don't really think we have time to be Walter. We're going to have to be Walter next episode. Oh, wait. we got to see what this stuff is. Hold on. Pepper. You have... Okay. I mean, that's chili powder, oregano, nutmeg. All the spices are double racked in every top and bottom. So we got coriander, rosemary, dill, nutmeg, oregano, chili powder, pepper... So that's a garlic salt, garlic salt, and cinnamon. These are all the spices. Specifically, you have these two tiny jars of peppercorns to try and flavor your 90 gallons of pea soup. Your, your ratios are all fucked up, Walter. They're just all fucked up. I can't, I can't take it anymore. Imagining your... Why were you counting off the days, too, by the way? What's that all about? Are you counting down to the... He was counting down to the apocalypse, clearly. You know what, Walter? I, I, I don't think I've got much more exploration of the depths of you inside me today. We'll have to pick that up next time. I'm assuming the when we go inside, Walter, it's just going to be us. And I can't help but notice there's a can opener at the base of his portrait. I'm just assuming it's going to be us shoveling pea soup into our mouths until we die. That's how Uncle Walter died. He just he, he tried to consume 92 gallons of pea soup in a single sitting, setting his own... He was trying to break his own previous world record. He had the world record at 91 and a half gallons of pea soup in a single sitting. He's like, you know what? Pretty sure I can stretch it to 92. Call Guinness. And then next thing you know, it wasn't actually call Guinness. It was call the coroner. I'm dead. Just like this episode. If you enjoyed it, feel free to drop a like down in the comment section. Support really does mean a lot. If you'd like to watch us go eat pea soup as Uncle Walter... Might consider subscribing as well. New episodes of What Remains of Edith Finch every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. Right now, however, thanks very much for watching. I'll see you again soon.